So we we'll just move ahead with uh, more concepts today. So yesterday we have seen a uh, simple HTML, right? Where uh, we wrote a simple form, right? And on click of the submit, we just want to serve it whatever we wanted there, right? And we just painted some hello world, right? And if you can remember how we started the server, is there is a tab called Server tab in our uh, bottommost lower right. So where you can see that this server's uh, application or web application is being hosted on this Tomcat, right? And this is what uh, whenever we start the Tomcat, we can actually go and uh, browse the server, right? How you can browse the server is you can just right click or start, or you can directly run this up from here. When you click on run here, right? So what happens? This Tomcat, you can see here, this Tomcat is starting now. So don't worry about this right things, whatever we are getting, right? So these are some things which are uh, Tomcat logs. Right? Maybe you do, if you don't want after, once you start this Tomcat, right? Uh, sometimes what you feel that whatever we are going on uh, through this application is giving this up. Don't think about that. So one citizen, you can you may just uh, clear that out so that it will be more easy that from now on whatever you do will be shown here for the application itself. Yeah? Nothing else. Now here, just give some attention here. So we have seen this. Let me open up uh, Mozilla <coughs> so that I can we'll just use. Uh, yeah. Now you can see when I uh, here. Uh, you can see that whatever we have given is something called HTTP protocol, right? And we have mentioned some local host, right? Local host is nothing but so now whenever we, uh, you know, uh, have done our setup, right? You can see here, uh, Tomcat server at local host. We have mentioned the name as local host, and we gave the even our, you know, file number for IP with the local host, and the port is four nines because we have mentioned it four nines in this Tomcat server. Right in our config, if you remember this config in our servers, right, you have something called server.xml. Right? In server.xml, if you go into this XML, there will be something called connector. In connector, you can see that's how that's what is output. If you change this port, if you change this port, even you have to change it in our applications. That's important. Right? If you change this port, you have to restart the Tomcat, which will change the complete configuration of the Tomcat which is hosted on the revived boot and all of the applications as of now anyways we are just seeing one uh, web application here we will be having many right so everything will get changed with respect to that right <coughs> all the URLs will get changed as such and then once this part is done then start with our actual application name as of now we just gave it as a servlet you can give anything here right so whatever the may, may, may you mention in your war file, I'll be giving, I'll be showing you how to create a war file once we are done with the uh, servlets, right? And we'll see how we can actually run them, right? So that name will be coming up here, which is also called as a directory where your, uh, you know, pages will be there, right? And then we have your source name, which is index.html. If you don't want to mention anything, don't mention anything here. Also, when you click, you can see again it is going to the same page which is index.html right now how it is going it is going because in our web.xml you can see which is a deployment script right we gave welcome file as index.html and we created index.html that's why if you don't mention anything your server Tomcat server will visit this descriptor file and in welcome file list you can search whether is there any resource which is matching to this right so it will go to that resource and that's why we are getting this even if you don't do anything it will go to the home page whatever you mention as a home that is what that is how you talk about this. now let's <coughs> uh, uh, let's see uh, different things today now let me close this up so today let us start with something called server request it is a interface server interface now we have seen something called HTTP server request which I was showing you yesterday so let us create a new servlet so the use case will be this let us create a simple login page 
login HTML as such. Simple login HTML. And then what we'll do on click of the button login, right? We'll just take the we'll have to take the information from login page to server. That is what we want. we're gonna do. Right? And print it here. Print this information here. That is what we're going to do. So this servlets and login page, whatever we are going to do, right? So we'll be using the same servlets and you know different things to learn multiple concepts, right? So let us call this servlet as validation servlet, right? A simple validation servlet. Let's go and create that. <coughs> First let me create a login page. HTML page, let me give it as login. Right? Now here, whatever you can see title, right? So this title is nothing but the title of your tab or your web page. Now here in our index.html, right, we didn't give any title. It says insert title here, right? Just say this as index type of home. Right? Now you can see it is publishing. Now if you go back and refresh this, now you can see index home. That is where you actually give the name of your uh, web page, right? It can be anywhere, right? I'm just you know, explaining in HTML. It is same even in your JSP. There will be a tag called title. This title is nothing but your page title. And the title will be printed over here. Whatever you do the title will be printed here, right? <coughs> that is what is the title. Now, let's go back to this. So let us say this is my login, right? So, so that I will be getting the title as login. Now inside, as I said, what we are going to create here is we will create some username and password text boxes, right? And then we will create a submit. So for that we need a form, <coughs> right? Now so this action is nothing but you have to give the server name as we have seen yesterday, right? Now inside this form, let us create an input. I hope you guys know this input. Input is nothing but the element of HTML which can take any control which 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 is embedded with multiple controls which you can actually serve by using that attribute called type. Just give type here. By default it's two text, but you can get many things, right? You can get you can make input as checkbox or password, which is it'll make you to enter some you know password encrypted one, right? Or submit button, anything. So let us take text. Right? And then there is something called name here. I'll explain you why we have to give name. Let us give the name over here. This is my first uh, input. Let us say username. And then let us give password. Let us give it as input. Type. You can mention either as a text or let us make it as password. And the name is equal to pwd something right? password and we have made it as PWD. Now let us say break here because we want to print this at this next line and again break here right and then we'll take up one input right of type submit because this form <coughs> will actually act whenever you click on submit button only. Until unless you take any submit button and do some action called click, this form will not activate. Right? So that is why we create something called. So let us create a name here, or let's not bother about this. Let us say value. Value is nothing but whatever you want to show on button is called as a value. Now there is a simple web page you have created. Form action. Username will be your this text box with a name and type. And password is again a type of password and name is PD. You just take to this name. Okay? And we are taking this up a simple form. Let me run this up. Now you can see the simple login page here. Okay? Username, you have password and your login button. Now as of now, when I click something well, it won't show anything. But can you see this part? This is part, this is something which you have to see first. We just understand this first. Now this part of story is called as a query string. If you remember while learning URL, right, you have seen this part which is a query string. The query string will be in this way. 
Now, you would have seen this in your websites that every this is something which is a uh, true URL and with some page or server you will be getting something called question mark which means from question mark the next thing is called as a query string query string is nothing but whatever controls you have which are input controls right and whatever input controls have got something called name name attribute right so those things will be populated right those things will be populated as such like this username is equal to some value and you have something called password is equal to some value now as of now as we didn't give anything here that's why they are empty let us say i'm giving it as some x y z and some password as one two three four something when i click on that can you see this the username u name became is equal to xyz and pwd became one two three now this is what is our query string right now now there is something which you have to understand here so each and every query string element right will be separated by something called ambassador right and here each and every token of a query string will be separated by is equal which means which means <coughs> the key will be the name of your element what is this that's why we have to mention name here name as u name so as we gave u name that's why we got u name and the value of this control this control is nothing but user name control that's why we got u name and whatever you get the value it popped it here and you have got password password is nothing but your pwd name and whatever we entered here got popped it over here that is a password so this is what we call as a query string we are actually sending from our current page to the next page right we will see how to handle this but as of now understand what is a query string right so this is what we call as a query string now here you can see that there is one more input type right which is submit but we are not getting that here why we are not getting because we don't have name here right if you say name here right? let us say <coughs> this name is some uh, uh, sub uh, let me say as dmt right? <coughs> now let's go to this uh, restart this up let's go back to this part and just say login dot html enter right we have got this right let us say <coughs> this is some three and some one two three four five click on this <coughs> now can you see this you have your name you have password pwd and also you have got some sbmp which means the controls whatever you mention here right or the elements whatever you mention in the form action right and whatever you say with the name name key right all those things will be populated in your query string that is what is called as a query string and how it is being populated is being taken care by your tag called form <coughs> what you do it will take the name attribute find out the actual key what exactly is a value of name right and then whatever the data you enter into this will be the value in the same way put an ambassador go to the next second put an ambassador put the next second that is what happens in a form action now if you define any control outside this form what happens let us see that let us say you have something called type again text and i have name here right let us say name i have it as a date something or or something called uh, some date current right? let us say this name is there so here in this maybe i'll i'll i may enter something called date now let us just go back and see what happens there right now you can see there is one more text box here now let us enter this as some three some something like a b c 1 2 3 and here before clicking on login let us say this is some uh, day dash maybe today some, something when i click on login right can you see this what happened here when i when you click on login you are not getting this because this is this control is out of the form right now you will understand whatever you mention inside a form this submit button whenever you click on the submit button the form will come into picture and the form will take only 
only the elements which are mentioned inside those things and we'll take the name and the value which have entered and we'll create a query string and we'll move on to the next item where whatever we mentioned here that is what your uh, form tag will do whatever you mention outside this right outside this so you haven't mentioned name any yes you can mention dt something right whatever you mention outside this form will not be taken up right that is what is happened you have just seen it now right uh, so you know, yeah johnny uh, we can have multiple forms inside uh, you can have, yes yes you can have multiple forms you can have multiple forms right and then you can keep this here yeah that's what my next uh, thing but <coughs> okay you can have this and you can just say uh input and you can have something called type as submit you can have that just say uh, name or something called value as maybe go right and from this form let's break it up twice maybe right and yes you can have that right now when we go back and refresh this now you can see this is one form and this is one form now how to check that let us say I'm doing something called today here. Let's click on go. Now you can see it get only one query string, which is this. Okay. You can have any number of. Now if you go to this page and just say something here, maybe A B C and something, and you click on login, it will consider only this. Now you can see this part. Remember password, right? So why we are getting this part is whenever all the browsers are enabled, whenever you have password type, right? Now we have taken the input type called password. Right. Whenever you use this part and just do some action, right? If all the browsers are enabled to something like, even if you have only one password type and click on submit, it will it will feel that you are actually doing something with password. Then that's why it is giving some op option to uh, whether you want to remember that or not. That's why we are getting that. Okay. That will act if I give only password. See, when I click on, it will ask for your password again. Okay? Don't worry about that. Right. So that is what happens. Right. And when you click on password, right, it will it will save the contents of whatever this page, I mean whatever this form I've got, the complete contents, and then the next time whenever you want to enter, it will get that. That is what happens. Right? So that is how you can actually create a different form with something called submit button. Right? You can also create form inside a form. Right? Here is a form. You can also create nested forms. Right? But that is not we are going to learn here. That's fine. Right? But you can do that. Now here, <coughs> what we are going to see here is okay. Let's uh, now let us create a circuit. Let us call it as uh, validation circuit. Right, validation. Click on finish. Now we have got this circuit. Now don't worry about no why what this all the first things are done, but this will will be getting. We are more interested on the method which you are going to stay here. Now here, as of now, we didn't mention anything. Now let us mention this validation. So let me, right? And if you don't mention something called method here, right? We have something called method. I have already shown you this. This method is something by default. If you don't mention any method for form, it will be your get method, which is called as a to get uh, HTTP method, right? But if you mention it as particular to get, yes, it will go to get, or you can also have post or anything. Okay, but as of now, let us consider get. Right? Now let's go back here. Now let us see how we can actually handle that over here. Is what we want. <coughs> now here, so what is the use case? What we were talking about is, so now we have created a HTML page successfully. Now, what we are creating is we are creating something called validation servlet, and we want to print whatever data like username and password is coming. We want to print that in our servlet, or we want to take some, we want to take some action in servlet to print out, right? That is what we want to do, and we have to connect these two. Connecting these two is nothing but in your form we just gave action as validation. Validation here is nothing but a servlet name. Which means here we have connected these two. Our task is done at login dot HTML page. Now it is the important task which we have to see at the servlet. 
now let us see what is it. Now here, what we are more interested is on a request, survey request. That is what we started the class with. We will be checking out what exactly is a servlet request interface. Right. So again, this HTTP servlet is something which is implementing a servlet request interface. Servlet request is nothing but it's a generic one which can handle any protocol. But now, we, what we are more interested in is of HTTP servlet request. request. Now, <coughs> this servlet request is something which is, uh, you know, uh, this is something like it is used to get all the content types or all the requests information what whatever we are getting from client. But client is nothing but here, my login.html is nothing but a client here. Now some person is using this. So whenever he clicks on submit or whenever we call this servlet, right, whatever information is being sent from here and whatever we are getting that information to servlet here, right? So we will be using this class, right, to read all the information. That is what is here. Now in this servlet request, you can see here that is we will be getting the HTTP servlet request directly into our into uh, into our do get method as a <coughs> as a um, as an argument, right? Now using this servlet request, we will be reading all the query strings. Whatever we are doing. not only query strings, we have many things what you can actually. Uh, get it from request. We will be checking out that. Now first thing what we will be checking out is, first let us see there is a first method in a HTTP request called get parameter. Right? We have this get parameter. Okay? Now this get parameter will have to mention the key here which will give you the value. That is what we will be using. Get parameter is a, is a main thing where we will be using the key. The key here is nothing but the name of the controller, which is new name. Right? And again PWD. These are keys. If you access this, this will give you the value. Let's go back here. Let us see how we can get. Let me create a string to get the value. Let us say I want to get the username is equal to. Now as I said, you will be getting whatever you are getting in a request, you have to get it from your request class object, which is a request here. Just say request, HTTP servlet request, and then get. We have something called get parameter, right? Get parameter, and you have to mention the key here. Now, what is the key? Key is nothing but the control name of your control here, the login, which is username. The name is your name. You have to mention the same name over here. That is something which is uh, okay. Name. <coughs> And then you have something called password. Let us say, okay, uh, password is equal to again okay, request dot get parameter of here. Let's go back here. The key was PWD. Go back here and just say PWD. Right? It is not necessary that you have to actually read up everything. Right? As of now, if you can see, we are getting username, password, and something called submit. Right? If you don't want anything, you'll just ignore it. Don't read that. Right? But only thing is, it is providing the complete information to you. Whatever is needed, just do that. That is what is here. Right? And then, first, as we have seen yesterday, if you want to print anything or if you want to send, now as of now, we have handled the request, whatever we have got. Right? From login.html, we have got something called username and password. We, uh, we have written some code to get them. Now, what we have to write is, I want to print this information in some other page. Right? So for that, you can also do that part in your, this current decimal. How? You can do that using your print writer. If you remember, we have used something called print writer. Out is equal to, as I want to write this in response, you have to take an object of response, which is your uh, response, right? You have response dot get writer, which will give you access to writer. Now before accessing this, if you remember, we have to set the content type of our <coughs> content type of our response. So this thing you, you have to do only if you are calling or if you are actually moving or creating any page from direct server itself. So this is something which you are actually creating a direct uh, page or some interface here itself, some new view from content type itself, right? Just make it as text. 
or HTML view, right? If you want to write any HTML, you can. Now here, let us say you want to print something called out dot. Maybe write up. You can just write uh, write something called welcome. and just say username and then <coughs> just say this and just close out your field right print right now oh, anyways you have just read username also we just print the password if you want as the information say there is nothing wrong in printing that near password <coughs> yeah. so with this what we are doing here is we are doing the two different sections here the first section was whatever you caught we are reading using what equals dot get parameter. Remember, get parameter is something which is used to read your query string. That is what we have, right? And we are storing it on our variables. Okay. Let's go back and actually see how it works. Right? So as we have created something here, let us restart this. Let's click on this. So yeah, atomic will be restarted and the project will be deployed. That's what happens. Now even if you clean this, cleaning is nothing but we are actually rebuilding this. So when we read in this, you can see it is republishing. Okay? That is what I republish and reset automatically. Let's go back to our login page. Now let's get rid of this. We don't need this part. Let me just uh, take that out. Okay? Now, <coughs> now you can see a plain HTML page. Now let us say I want to give uh, some name here, let us say username is Mango and password is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right. When I click on login, right, now you can see welcome. Now you can see here username is so and so and password is also and something else. Now you can see what I username you gave. Now you can see the server name here, right? Now it was my login.html. When I clicked on that, when I clicked on the submit button, it automatically went to this action. So this in this action, you can actually mention anything. You can use an HTML page or a JSP page or a server, anything. As of now, what we are talking about is server. That's why whenever you click on submit, it automatically went to server. Now you can see uh, the server name here. And then it created a query string beside this server name and it gave it to us. Right, that is what we got. Now here, this is your standard URL for your welcome page let us say. Now let us say if you want to change something here, you can directly do this here. Let us say instead of a mango, I am just giving some tree. Enter. Now you can see it works directly. Now which means you are directly accessing your server. Right? In your password, let us say you are giving some A, B, C, some 5, 6, 7. Right? And enter. Now you can see by username, whatever you changing here, and password that is changing here is the input for this, right? Now, how it is being read? It is being read using something called your get parameter, new name, and get parameter password. So, what is this is uh, more considering is whatever you have in your query string here is a direct input to your server. That is what happens, right? That is why if you see your uh, uh, Google search, right? When you click on search. Right, there is some query string form, and everything, all your let us say, if you are in Google, let us say. Right. right. <coughs> now let us say, if you say something called uh, some something or something, and enter. Now you can see this, right? It will actually create out, right? It will actually append the complete string of your something. You can see here somewhere here. It is actually following up your query strings. What is the content? What everything? If you give multiples, three like some some things here, we will actually append that in this way. Which means this is actually preparing some query string, right? Of this sort. And what it is doing is whenever it reads, it will this and it is actually appending these things with plus. So that is how you can actually do. We will see how to actually rearrange your query strings later on. Right? That is what is your query string. And that is what we have seen something called get parameter. How you can actually get the details and place it here. It's a uh, this is a way how you can actually read them. Now again, 
Il y a un autre mec. Ah, c'est Il y a Jeremy. Il y a Jeremy. Yeah, in real time, uh, the password and all is not uh, no, no, uh, not seen in that query string, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. It, you won't be able to see that. You should not actually populate your username and password using this. You should never do that. Just for example, I'm just uh, you know giving you. It may not be the real time example, right? But you, you may say username and some maybe ID, right? You can just say that. Uh, I just gave you password, right? Now. If you want to hide this information, right? Basically, what we'll do is we'll be going for the post actually. Post is something which is same as your get, but post can handle bigger data, and whatever data is coming up you, uh, through URL, right? It won't be showing in URL. It will be attached to your data. Let me copy the same code and paste it here. Okay. Now, let us say I want to go to post. We'll see what happens now. This is something which is answer to your question, Jami, right? Which was was about to explain. Now this do post is something, right? Which is same as do get, but the only thing is post is something which is used to, which is more secure than do get. All the details, whatever you are getting from the farm, if you are using post, right, will be attached to the body and not to the URL, right? If you feel that. Uh, data is not sensitive. If you want to send it through URL, you can just say get because that is the lighter one. But the post is heavier one because through the body content itself, it will attach the details. Now let us go and see how it works. Now let me restart the server. Let's go back to the machine daily. Right, okay, login.html, enter it up. Right. Now let me give something on ABC. D and password as of three four five six. When I click on this, now you can see something called you have got a validation. So you can that's it, and nothing else here. But we got the information till here, and you can see nothing here. Why? Because your post, as I said, your post will work to transfer the data from one one you know. Uh, Entity to another entity, but the data will not be passed over the URL. But the data will be passed over the body itself. So whenever we are getting to server, right? It doesn't matter from where we are getting. We will be getting in request itself, right? So that's why we get username and password, which is embedded in the body of your page itself. That is how we are able to read them. If you feel that it's a sec, well, now this post is no secure one. No one on crack that actually, right? Because we are sending through uh, the body itself. So in that case, you can go for your post method. That is what is a your get and post how it works, right? And that is how you can actually uh, get the data in this form, right, Johnny? Was it clear? Fine. <coughs> so here it was. So these are the main methods uh, used, right? And these are the main methods we mostly use, yes. Right? Which is do get and do post. Yes, you also have some other uh, HTTP methods. We will explain you them also, right? Fine. So in real time, we'll be using these two mainly, right? For yeah. FTPs, yeah. Yeah. Can you send the response to the HTML file? Login. Or, so, suppose make some another HTML. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. From servlet, I'll I'll send one more response to the other HTML. Okay. Right? And other servlet also, like. Yes, yes, yes. We'll be doing that. We we will be we'll be uh, writing up the collaboration of servlets. Where we will be sending information from one server to the server, one server to the JS, I mean sorry, HTML along. We'll do that. Right? We have more concepts. Right? We'll do that. Not to worry. And as of now, we are just you know understanding how the server works when we want to get some data from one uh, entity to our server. Right? The forward action we'll see. Fine. And how the username will be shared by all the. HTML or the all the JSV files like yeah yeah uh, that be, that can be uh, done using your session maybe or cookies or URL writing yes you'll be getting that right you have to maintain if you want to maintain uh, some data across the whole application right you have something called session management we have to do that okay. and we have a separate topic on that right we'll we'll be seeing that okay okay and uh, it is possible with servlet context also uh, it is also for You see, whenever we are saying server context, right, it's a big word. So server context have got so many things. Server context have got something 
uh, reading the complete uh, configuration XML, right? Descript, uh, you know, uh, configuration XML in the sense your deployment descriptor, which is web.xml. Now here you can see whatever server you create, right? That particular server tags will be created here, right? And Inside this, you can actually create something called params, right? So this is also will be uh, you have something called lead param. We'll be coming to this part. You'll understand this. Oh. I haven't started, but yes, you can actually use your uh, uh, context to save the uh, data in it. But again, it is not secure. Right? It is again, it is not secure. So what is the safe space? Only it's only using. You can use something called HTTP session, which will be stored in your server. Okay. Right? If you save cookie, right? Cookie will be saved in your local. In your browser, as such, right? As as your browser is open, right? The cookie will be there. If you close the browser, maybe the cookie will be disposed. And again, if you open the some other browser, maybe there we have to again log in. Where the cookie will save your username. That is how it happens. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be checking out that in our uh, upcoming classes. Right? We'll also see the session management. A different session management. We have something called uh, uh, HTTP session. We have A cookie, you have a URL writing. Sorry, URL writing. You also have something called hidden fields. There are so many things, right? So among them, whatever you feel can be used, you can use that, right? So that is what is a uh, get parameter. Now you are, you can also do this in some other way. We'll see that. Now, as I said, you have one more way. I mean, there are some uh, other methods of uh, request which are. You can actually get something called uh, request dot. You have. You can actually get something called content type. Right? Okay. If uh, you are actually getting from HTML, or you may also get from one server to other server. Right? If you want to know what content type they are using, you can also get that. Let me just this out this. Okay. Because your content type will give you a basic string what exactly they are using. Right? Now if I go back here. And just uh, click on ABC. Right. Oh, I want to restart it. That's over. So login dot is team. I have. Right. Or let us say you want to click on login. Now let's go back to this part and see. Okay, as of now, as we are getting from our uh, this uh, page, right? Maybe the content type. We should get the content type we have because HTML have got the content type. Now, maybe it is giving as a server context. Doesn't matter. But when we are actually this, we will be using mostly when we actually move from one server to other server, right? Because we will be setting some content type. Right? We will then get that. That is something. From here, what we are more interested on is we have something called let us say <coughs> keys. You can actually get if you don't remember this key type, you can also get all the keys possible with the something called get parameter names. So this parameter names will give you all the list of things whatever you are getting. Now let us do that. So this will give you something called enumeration. So this enumeration uh, is your Java dot Google enumeration. Now let me go here. You can see it will give you an enumeration which is a Google uh, package enumeration. Let me just say string here. Let us say I am getting L. Enum. So let us say keys. We will get all the keys here. Now let's go back and just say for each of uh, our enum enumeration item, right? Or you can just say something called Enum keys dot We have something called next element, right? We have to use this next element, which will give us two. 
this still has more elements which is why we can use right while loop and just say this as string lstr key is equal to le1 dot next element again it acts as a cursor now let us say this will give you a key let me print this out of maybe i'll just say let us say string and let us take this value is equal to uh, now you can just say request dot get parameter of you want a key something else you can just give this key right? because we are getting all the keys and we are having that now let us print here as key as lsr key and we want a value So I'm not printing uh, in my page, but I'm just printing over here itself. I'm actually reading all the keys and printing everything over here in my server itself. Let me restart my server. Let's go back to my login office table. <coughs> Let me click on login. So it went here. Now it's get back here. Now you can see all the keys. Two are keys of me, right? Name was login. So this submit is nothing but the button actually. In here we have uh, submit right, That's it. and the value was login, which we gave. That's why we got that over here, which is submit login. And we have something called password PWD, we yeah, have PWD, and the value which we gave, and we send it. So this is how, if you don't remember, you can just go through this. Uh, this is how you can actually get all the values possible, which is get parameter names, right? You can actually get the values from where you are actually getting uh, it will be handled in your email and this is how you can actually read your email but then there is something which is cursor type right? you can get the, all the enums and you can read them as such right? so this is how you can actually handle uh, data from some, some entity to your uh, server the same thing can be done in any of your any of your toolkit and the same thing works even your do post let me say it, but only thing is the complete data whatever you are getting will be attached to the body. That is how it happens, right? If you want to do any FTP, right, uh, like the big file upload, you know, people will be using two post because there is a secure way where you can actually convert the uh, you know, complete talk into buffer and send it in your uh, through your body attachment, right? That is where we can use your uh, post method, right? And this is how you can actually see something called getting keys and all. Right? Now, that is what is a complete uh, survey request part where you can get. And survey requests have got uh, more methods. We have something called, you know, uh, get attribute. We will be learning these things when we go to session management and all. Right? We have character encoding. Character encoding is nothing but. Now, we will be learning this more on uh, JSP. So, here. You have something called, I don't think you'll be having this. So when you create a JSP, right, each and everything will have a character encoding. Character encoding is nothing but the way where you are actually, you are getting the uh, buffer. So we have few character, uh, uh, you know, character encoding types like UTF-8, UTF-16, UTF-32, right, which is Unicode F format, right. Uh, because if you are sending any XML or anything using your UTF-8, right, which means which, uh, that data is compatible to read in uh, to read 8 bits at a time. Right? That is why even if you have seen some XMLs, right, you can see some uh, encoding types. Right? We will be seeing this encoding, which means whatever XML you are you are actually designing can be read at least uh, you can actually read this at least by 8 bits. It may also work if you are creating UTF-8, if you want to work it on 16, it may work. Right? But, but basically we mentioned this in order to match up your server client uh, versions. That is what is a character encoding we are actually checking out. Right? That is what is a character encoding we can, we can get it. And you have something called parameter value. Yes, you can also get something called request dot get parameter uh, You have seen something called 
names right and parameter you have something called values here so this values you will be getting for a key if you have multiple values for one key right you can get using by parameter values now right? it depends on the situation you are using but yes if you have multiple keys you can actually get them in this parameter and this will return you a string array you can see this the signature of get parameters value is a string array you will be getting for one key the multiple values you will be getting as a string array right you can read them as a multiple values right that is what get parameter values and then you have something called length length of the context you have something called context length this is nothing but how much buffer length you are actually getting from one entity to a server that is your context length you can also read using a request yeah but basically we will be using this request context mostly mostly for session management or reading some you know uh, cookies all those things right which we basically use something called attribute or attribute names this is something which we'll be using mostly right and also we have many things like get server name maybe you can just say get server name right which will give you the server from where you are actually working on or it will give you the client server client server in the sense who are you requesting you may get the port of it guys sometimes you have to uh, give you somewhere where you can actually mention uh, from where we are getting the request right the ip of your, uh, client will be registered here right if you want to register all the ips and ports from where you are getting the request you can use this server name right because yeah uh when to use request dot get parameter and request dot get attribute or set attribute yeah so get attribute will be used mostly when you are actually going for sessions okay parameter is something if you want to paper, then you can get it from using request dot get attribute right exactly yeah yeah you have something called set you have something okay. called set attribute right right you can actually give the key and value and when once you go to the next one you can say get okay okay and it will, this this will be accessed by all the you know all the jsps right all the jsps are yeah, there yes once you set it it will be accessed by every server every server every jsp every html yeah okay and but the get parameter is available only for the next page right yeah get parameter is a, no get parameter is available i mean the method is available everywhere but may not be the data right from one page okay. to here you have seen this data if you want to pass this data again you have to create your own your own uh, variables again you will be seeing that you will be checking out that when we create something called url relating right you have to manually do that if you want to pass the data otherwise it won't go yes you are right this data will not be passed across right okay okay right yeah so that is how you can actually uh, read something in into your uh, request that is what is complete care for your request right and we'll be touching upon response things which we have response as of now what you have seen is you have seen something called uh, writing into response directly right but basically as uh, swadhi was mentioning we will be going from one server to other server from one server to other login page Uh, HTML maybe or some other JSP, right? Using something. But as of now, what we'll see is we'll see something called we'll uh, we'll do some collaboration between server to server and server to some HTML. We'll be checking all that, right? But when we come to JSP, right? Then we'll see the collaboration of server to uh, some JSP or JSP to server and server to server to server and then JSP. There are so many collaborations. We'll be checking out everything, right? So you guys have any? Questions on this, how we can use? Don't think about HTML. Whatever we are, we can do in HTML. We can do everything in our JSP too. Right? We can do that. Right? That is what is BP. Uh, right? So tomorrow, what we'll see is we'll see how we can actually move. What are the different ways that we can move from our validation server? Right? We'll be using the same examples. How we can actually move from virtual server to some other entity, but as of now, what we are doing, we are creating a virtual page here itself, right? Which is a print writer, which means the server will create a virtual page, which is this one, right? Where it is actually printing whatever we need. This is one thing where you can actually, we are actually move, uh, staying at the same server and we are actually getting all the details. But yes, we'll see 
different ways how we can actually move from one server to other server first. First, we'll see the server part, and then we'll move on to some HTML or JSP. Right? So that is what is your server request. Fine. <coughs> so let's wind up here at this part. I'll share this video. Just go through this, and uh, uh, maybe I would re request or you know, I would suggest you guys to just go through these videos of Tomcat setup and creating a basic server. Right? If you're clear that. The upcoming classes will make you feel comfortable, otherwise it will be tough to understand, right? Okay then guys, if you have any doubts, you can ask me now, maybe uh, when we meet tomorrow, right? So, uh, you can maybe, if you have any doubts, you can also ask me tomorrow. Monday, right? Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, Monday, on Monday, you can ask me. Okay, okay.